Okay, today we're going to look at the new color wheels in DaVinci Resolve 17. I've already done a video on the primary color wheels here. Uh, I will do a quick overview right now, but if you want to learn more about that, there's a link in the description below. One thing I will notice is that what we're going to be working in is a wide gamut. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. If we come down here to the cog wheel, head over to color management, you can see that we're working in the YRGB color manage, uh, color science option, and then we're choosing DaVinci uh, wide gamut. If I quickly change this to the Rec 709 and then click on save, this is similar to what you've probably seen in the other video. If we adjust the gain, adjust the white point. So again, the white point is up here in the top right on our scopes, and the black point is down here in the bottom left. If we adjust the gamma, let me go ahead and reset this. We adjust the gamma, it keeps the white points and the black points pinned, but it adjusts the middle portion. And if we reset this and we adjust the lift, it adjusts the black point. And you can see what it's doing to our image up here. One thing you will notice, and this will come into uh, play when we head over to the HDR wheels, is that it affects the whole image. So for example, let's say, let's look at this area up here towards the bright part of our footage. Even if I adjust the lift, which is the black point, that part is being adjusted too. And you can see that reflected up here. Let's say it's this gray portion right here. It will become a darker gray and a lighter gray and that's the first reason why I think in some cases, or even most cases, why it may be better to use the HDR color wheels as opposed to the primary color wheels. So having said that, let me go ahead and reset all this. Change this to our DaVinci wide gamut. And I can address that in a separate video if you're curious about what that reference is. So I'll click on save. This does have a little impact on how these wheels perform, and I'll show you that right now. Not to the extent that the HDR wheels affect the footage, but I'll show you the difference here. So now if we adjust the gain, which again, remember is the uh, brightest brights, it's the white point. It's still moving everything. You'll notice even down here on the dark, in the dark part of our footage, it's still being adjusted. There's more of, instead of a straight line, it's more of a slope where it comes up here and it slopes off uh, really nicely. Uh, same thing with the lift. If I adjust the black point, it does adjust the black point, but instead of a straight line coming down to this bottom portion here, it has a nice smooth transition to that black point. So again, let's head over to our HDR color wheels and I'll show you why I think these may be better suited for a lot of situations. Now, at first it may appear that we have the same amount of color wheels, but we actually have a lot more. The base that you start with is six different zones. You can actually create more than that, but right now I'll just show you what's already in the system. So the brightest brights will be the specular highlights. Then we have the highlights, then we have the light. The way that you have to look at these is the specular highlights will be over here towards the top of our footage. So the brightest brights. Now the highlights, yes, will encompass a lot more, but it's not only affecting lower down on the brightness scale. It's also affecting everything above it. Going along the same line, the lights will make a bigger circle, so to speak. It will encompass more of the brightness range, but will also include the highlight and specular. So we can see that if we head over into our zone window. So up here on our HDR color wheels, we can click on this and it opens up this window right here. So if I was to click on specular, it shows the brightest parts of the footage being over here and anything to the right is what it's affecting. Here are our highlights. Moving on, we have our lights. Again, you can see how it's facing in that direction and it encompasses everything to the right. Now the shadow and lights in this case cover the most area and they also overlap. So here's our light. If I click on shadow, you'll see the fall off is facing this way, 
but it's also on this side. So technically it's covering a little bit of the light and that doesn't affect your footage in any sort of bad way or anything that will degrade your footage. It's just something that you should keep in mind when you're grading your footage. And of course the dark is here and the black is here. Now these are fully customizable. What I'll say is you can come up here and I can technically just move the black around. So that will cover more or less of what is included in your footage. Now you probably already determined this, but if I click over here, you can see where you have the specular highlight and light. If I click on these wheels to the left, you'll see where we have the shadow dark and black. And it's pretty much the same, but reversed to what we said before, in the sense that, as I mentioned, shadow will cover the biggest area, dark will cover a little bit less, so that circle down here will be a little bit smaller, and then the blacks will be somewhere down here. So now that we've covered what these pretty much do, let me show you how they affect the footage. So if I come over here to the shadow wheel and I adjust the exposure, you can see how the top is being pinned, but it's actually adjusting the dark part of our footage. So as opposed to the primary wheels where it does affect the entire footage no matter what, this quickly targets specific areas of your footage without needing to key. So if I reset the shadow, we'll come over here to the dark, I'll lower the exposure. You'll notice where it affects less of the footage and the remainder of the footage remains that consistent diagonal line. Now one quick thing I want to mention before we move on to the next point is that if we reset this here, let me go ahead and reset this and head back over into our primary wheels. There actually is a shadow and highlight option, but they don't target the different Luma ranges the same way that the HDR color wheels do. So I'll show you right now, if we adjust the shadows, same thing as before, we're making the adjustments and it is of course affecting the shadows. We can see that up here, but it's still affecting every part of our footage. So even up here, that area is being adjusted. Same thing with the highlights. If I come over to the highlights, and maybe not to the same extent as the shadows, but it is still affecting our footage down here. Here we have a practical example of how this would be effective. Now, if you're curious what part of your footage is being affected, there's one of two ways that you can do this. If we select the specular highlights here and I click on this button right next to the name, to the left of the name, it makes everything else that gray color and it shows you the areas, which in this case is up here in the clouds. So that's our specular highlights. So if I come down to the exposure, making them brighter, making them less bright, and the rest of our footage remains the same, which of course makes sense. We've shown that in the scope from earlier. Not only do you have the option to adjust the exposure, but right to the next of it, you can adjust the saturation. So let's say you wanted the brightest brights and the darkest darks to not have much saturation at all. You can come in here, target that specific area and slide the slider over. Now, as I alluded to a little bit before, you could come in here and of course key certain parts of the footage. You can key a certain brightness range, but this makes your workflow a lot quicker. As with everything else in DaVinci Resolve, there are all multiple ways to do the same thing, but I just find working with these color wheels in this particular situation, is very efficient. So moving on to the next point, the way that it handles contrast in the primary wheels as opposed to the HDR wheels is a lot different. You may not realize this, but when you're adjusting contrast, you're actually af affecting saturation also. And I'll show you if we come over here to the waveform and change it to vector scope, I'll pop this out here. I'll head back to the primary wheels. We're gonna, going to adjust our contrast. Now, I won't really overview what the vector scope does, but we can see where pretty much the saturation is right in the middle there. Anything with high saturation will start heading towards the outside of that circle. If I adjust the contrast, you can see what happens with the colors. They really start getting saturated. And on the other hand, if we were to lower the saturation, we start losing all the colors, everything becomes desaturated, we lose that contrast. So let's come in here, I'll adjust the color wheels, reset those back to normal, head over to our HDR color wheels, come here and adjust our contrast. 
and you'll see we have a lot more contrast in our footage. The darks are getting darker, the brights are getting brighter, but it didn't really affect our saturation much. It did have some effect, but not to the extent that the primary wheels did. Same thing if we were to adjust in, in the other direction. Now the saturation does seem to expand a little bit if we lower our saturation, but as opposed to the primary color wheels where everything started to get gray and you lost all the color altogether, now you can actually retain the color, but lower the saturation. Let's say you wanted to lower the contrast because you think there was too much of a difference between the brights and the dark parts of your footage, but you didn't want to sacrifice the color integrity of your footage. Now you can come in here, lower the saturation. And again, this is goes back to the first part where we can affect specific ranges. So let me close out of this scope here. Let's come down to maybe the darks, see what we're affecting. Okay, so we're affecting this part. So I like the way that it looks now, for example. I don't know if I specifically keep it like this with this particular footage, but for this example, let's say I like the way that we lowered that contrast but I still think that darks should be darker. Now that we've shown what we're affecting, I'm going to come in here, lower the exposure. And then maybe I feel as if the bright parts should be a little bit brighter. Let's see what the highlights do. Okay, that's fine. I don't mind affecting all of that. So I will come in here, adjust the exposure. And that is kind of the beauty of the HDR color wheels. Whereas with the primaries, you're pretty much affecting everything. You can really make your footage pop by keeping your high dynamic range log footage similar to the way that it looked coming out of the camera. Obviously you don't want to keep log fo footage looking log, but you can add a little bit of contrast in there, but still have that pop by adding some bright brights and dark darks, just so that it's more appealing to your audience. The last thing that we're going to look at is how it affects color temperature. So I'm actually going to just reset this. So let's bring this back to the beginning. And then let's change this over to this scope right here. Now, if I was to adjust the temperature in our primary color wheels, let's see what happens. It really, it really splashes that color over everything. So it's just as if you maybe pushed everything, let's say on this offset wheel over to that color. So it becomes less of a color temperature thing and more of a hue adjustment. Let's go ahead and reset this and head over to our HDR color wheels. Now, if I was to adjust the temperature, you can see it's a lot more realistic. It's affecting certain parts of the footage more than other parts of the footage. It may seem that it's more subtle and that's actually better for what we need it for. It's more realistic in the sense that if we wanted to warm up our footage, let's say it was more of a sunny day, this would be a lot more realistic than it would be if you were to adjust it, in my opinion, over on the primary color wheels. I will say that if we head over to the cooler temperatures, it has less of an impact, but not so much so that you can't tell that this footage has been cooled down. Again, it's affecting specific areas more than it's affecting others, but that's pretty much it. I think the way that you can target the Luma ranges, number one, number two, the way that you adjust the contrast, but it doesn't adjust the saturation. So you can adjust those independently as opposed to obviously adjusting them together and then having to fight against yourself by needing to go back and adjust your saturation. I think is fantastic. And the way they implemented the color temperature is a lot more realistic and a lot more refined than the way that we've been using it in the primary color wheels. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a question down below also. All my social links are in the description below. Go ahead and follow me over on Twitter. I'm pretty active over there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.